All right, what's going on everyone? So recently I've been working on a project called webdevdaily.io and I made a couple of videos on this already, but if you are new to the channel and this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, this application that I'm building is designed to challenge your front end skills by building out daily projects. And each day or every 24 hours, there is a new design to code challenge that gets released. And then you can complete it directly on the website using our built-in IDE. And then once you submit that, it then gets added to your profile, which which then can be used as a portfolio to pretty much show off your web development skills. So anyways, I recently came across a small bug that I have with this application. So I figured I would share with you what that problem was and how I went ahead and solved it. Now, before we get started really quick, I want to provide some context for anybody that might be new to the channel that this application was built with Nux3. All right, so the issue that we have is actually regarding this countdown timer that we have for when the new challenge is going to be released. So currently it's 10 hours, four minutes, and then we have so many seconds. So if we do a refresh on the application, very quickly what you're gonna see is it's going to say six hours, four minutes, and however many seconds. So for some context really quickly, here is the function that is calculating the time remaining. So we're setting a target time to be 8 a.m., which is when we want the new challenge to be released. Then we're calculating the remaining time by subtracting the target time from the current time, which we're obtaining right here. Then we're doing a simple check to see if the remaining time is less than zero. If it is, then we just want to reset the remaining time back to that 24 hour mark. And then we're obtaining the hours, minutes, and seconds with these calculations. And then we're just going to insert these inside of a variable called challenge countdown. And then inside of the app.view file of this Nux application, we're importing and declaring this daily challenge store, which contains the logic for the calculating time remaining. And then we're just going to execute that function. And then we're going to use a set interval method to then execute this every second. And then here inside of the index.view file or our home page, we're then outputting that value of challenge countdown. So now that you have some context behind how this countdown timer works, you may be wondering, well, why is this happening? Whenever we do a refresh, there is a discrepancy for about a second with what the actual countdown timer should be. Now, as I mentioned, this application is built with Nux3, and if you're unfamiliar with Nux3, it does something called universal rendering. So for those unaware of what universal rendering is, it's a combination of server-side and client-side rendering. And what this means is that the first initial pull that you do to a page, so whenever we refresh into this application, this is going to be server-side rendered. And in the process, the browser is going to download the Vue JavaScript bundle in the background, and then it's going to be hydrated into that page. So then once this has been loaded in and you're navigating to different pages in the application, it's all going to be client side rendered. So with that being said, the reason why this is happening is because of the server side rendering. So whenever we refresh, what's happening is for that initial second when the page is loaded, it's actually grabbing the current time from the server and not the client itself. And to fix this issue, we can actually use a component from Nux called client only. And what this component does is it renders its slot content only in the client side. And what's also very useful about this component is we can define some props such as the fallback tag and the actual fallback content. And this will be loaded in while your application is loading in on the server side. And you can also specify a fallback slot itself. So for example, we have the client only component. And then within here, we have a template with the fallback slot. And then we can display some content such as a paragraph tag that says loading comments, which will be displayed while this is rendering on the server side. So here inside of the home page markup, we only want to display this block of code on the client side. So we want to wrap this inside of the client only component. So we'll say client only. And then within here, we just want to put this block of content. And now that we have this block of content inside of the client only component, it's only going to be loaded on the client side of the application and it's no longer going to be rendered in server side. So I also have the application spun up locally and the biggest problem with detecting the server side rendering issues is when you're in development mode, those issues aren't really going to be present. So for example, if we were to actually just go back to the code 
and we remove the client side only component or just move the content outside of this and we save it and we head back to the application. If we do a refresh while we're on localhost, we're not actually gonna ever see that problem we're seeing once we are uh, have our application deployed and it's being server side rendered. All right, so I went ahead and deployed that change to make this countdown timer render in only on the client side. So now if we do a refresh, we should no longer see that discrepancy when we first initially load in this application. Now, one thing that you wanna remember when using the client only component is that the content is only going to be loaded in on the client side. And just to reiterate what exactly that means is, for example, now with our countdown timer, since this is client side rendered only, it's not going to be rendered on the server side. Therefore, I believe the search crawlers are not going to see this particular bit of content. Now, in this example for the countdown timer, it doesn't really affect any sort of search engine optimization. So it doesn't really matter that it's client side rendered or not included on the server side, but it's just something to keep in mind if you are using the client only component. All right, so hopefully you found this video helpful and you learned something new about Nux. Definitely let me know what your thoughts are on the client-only component and maybe some other ways that you have used it down below in the comments. If you did find it helpful, be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you are new here to the channel. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.